The Winter Palace is a ruin torn apart by the Necrons, and the Primarch of the Dark Angels, Lionel Johnson himself, has deployed to drive them back. Now, before we begin, say hi, Dark Angels, Chris. Hi, Dark Angels, Chris. Do you like the new codex? This is the first time I've seen it. Yes, at the time of filming, you've turned up and I've just put it in your hand and it's not available right now. It's up for pre-order. It's got gold bits on. It's got gold bits on. Shame. So um, you don't know about anything in the book? Not massively. I'm only using two data sheets from it. So we've had a little skim through. And yes. So we're going to be using the new, unfortunately, nerfed um, profiles for Deathwing Knights and the Lion themselves. What do you mean, nerf Deathwing Knights and the Lion? So, the Deathwing Knights have had reduced damage on their maces. Yes. And the Lion has lost the minus one to wound. Right. With the Emperor's shield. So, he learned how to turn it on and now he forgot to charge it up. Brilliant. So it's kind of like half battery. But Deathwing Knights, did they have that minus one to uh, minus one on the damage before? Yeah. Did they have that? Yeah, they did, yeah. Did they have four wounds before? Yes. So they had that before? Yes. Because four wounds at minus one damage is really tanky. It's good, it's good, but they, they were damage three and now maces, they're damage two. Maces, and now they're damage two maces, yeah, yeah that's so. a thing. So you're not running any of the data sheets inside that, the attachments in that, because you haven't really seen it yet, you're no. running instead. I'm running a Vanguard because that's what I built my list around to begin with. Yes. So I've got the Vanguard spearhead, um, and... Yeah, and just run that from Codex Space Marines. Well, to be fair, that's one of the pluses you can do with Dark Angels. Like, as a Space Marine player, I've got a ta uh, six data sheets, detachments I can play with. You've now got nine. Ooh, that's me. very excited. Have yeah. you seen any ones that actually excite you in there? Because the Raven all the Wing leaks. looks really good. Um, the... Advance and shoot, fall back and shoot. Yeah, that looks. It reminds me of like sixth edition when they had that hit and run rule. Yes. So I'm um, really looking forward to getting some Ravenwing back on the table and Outriders getting battle line. I know. Quite nice. How cool is that? Yeah, so I might get some Outriders on the channel um, yeah. for the next game. So okay. Against the Dark Angels, I'm going to be running a Hyper Crypt Necron list because I really like the shenanigans from the Hyper Crypt Necron list. And we're playing a 2000 point game on this lovely table you see in front of you. The battle map is from urbanmats.com. But this gorgeous scenery, this modular scenery, in fact, is from marchofwar.co.uk. And you can build it however you want, put it together however you... It's just, it looks so good. It's glorious. So I had to put it down on the table. The, uh, you see from the dice that we're doing a bit of a janky deployment with Vox Static. So it costs two CP for CP rerolls. I kind of like it. It forces us to use more of the stratagems in our data sheets in our detachments rather than just going for the reroll all the time. Sweep an engagement. And because you've got some new things to play with, we're keeping it simple for the take and hold, mm. uh, which is 5, 10, 15 on the primaries from turn two. And then obviously the secondaries from the secondary mission deck. So thank you to James from March Award at Code UK for all this lovely scenery. And I want to say thank you to all my lovely subscribers and in particular all my lovely members. I really appreciate you. You know who you are. You're lovely. Thanks for helping me continue to do this. Let's take a look at these armies. Okay, this is just south of 2,000 points of Hypercrypt Necrons, and it turns out that Dark Angels Chris hasn't run against them before. Everything will be fine. It will be fine. This is what they do, okay? What happens is, is three units at the end of your turn, you can pick them up and put them into Strategic Reserve. So they'll come on from Strategic Reserve, but if they have Deep Strike, they can obviously Deep Strike from Strategic Reserve, which is more than nine inches away from the enemy, but there's a 1CP strat where you can drop them within just over three inches away from the enemy, which is quite nice. And of course, monoliths and deep strike. That's 700 points worth of monoliths there. <laughs> They're toughness high with a two up save and 20 plus wounds. And there's a one CP strat to give them a four up and vulnerable save as well. And they've got really big guns. The eternity gate is good for killing in uh, The particle whip is good for killing infantry. The death rays are good for killing everything else. And the eternity gate is something that you can a deep strike well you can draw units through infantry units through so after they come deep striking back in if there are any necron warriors on the battlefield or in reserve they can then come out from the eternity gate but they can't charge there's also a 2cp stratagem which says that you can charge when you come out of the eternity gate for infantry stuff but i haven't got any charge you punching stuff that's ever going to do that basically these going to be picked up Drop down again with not warriors spilling out of them here, there, and everywhere in order to score my secondaries while these cause a lot of hassle. And then the third unit that can deep strike 
and drop around all over the place. It's my unit of destroyers with my destroyer lord. And he's got the Osteoclave Fulcrum, I think it's called. It basically gives him and his unit deep strike. So these can get picked up and moved around as well. The Locust Destroyer Lord gives these critical hits on fives instead of sixes with their Gauss. And of course, he's got a Resorb. When you're off the table, when you pull units off the table in order to deep strike them back in again, you can't get your reanimation because obviously Necrons reanimate. They heal wounds. Uh, but you can if you spend a CP. So if this unit is injured, um, I can pop the CP and reanimate them while they're off the table. And of course, the Resorb is now a once per battle heal. Not every single time, all the time. Just once per battle uh, at the end of any phase. So those are my dropping around all over the place and then a running interferer and then big guns in the backfield. I've got two units of Lockhurst destroyers, no, one unit of Lockhurst destroyers there with the big heavy guns, one Doomsday Arc, 200 points of pain. And I'm bringing the Nightbringer for the first time. And he's cheesy as all hell with a four up invulnerable save, half all damage, five up feel no pain, and he reanimates wounds. He's very expensive, he's very nasty, and a lot of Necron lists run a couple of Catans at the same time. And this is my proxy Catan, known as the Death Reaper, which you can get from Den of Imagination Painting Studios. He's a smashing, gorgeous, very pretty model, and he's painted to level six or seven standard by Den of Imagination Painting Studios as well. Um, this non-metallic metal, he's an absolute G. I love it, thank you, Den. Now, he is cheese, but I'm bringing him along because my whole army shoots. It's the only thing that can do a bit of close combat. And Dark Angels Chris have brought three Redemptive Dreadnoughts and a Primarch, so I figured I needed a crutch. And what more crutch could you bring than a Catan? So I'm bringing him along. <laughs> <laughs> and one more thing, I have to shout out these gorgeous bases, and these are also from MarchofWar.co.uk. This is bang on, 2,000 points worth of Space Marines with the new points for the Lion and the Deathwing Knights, and the Vanguard Detachment does what now? So if I'm more than 12 inches away, I yep. am minus one to hit, and I get the benefit of cover. Nice. So most of my army shooting at range will be hitting you on fours, uh, which is good. And cover plus armour of contempt means not a lot of casualties. Hopefully not. I do like the Vanguard Detachment. It is a very nice, very cheeky one. There's options to put stuff in Strategic Reserve as well and yes. you strike them in. Yeah. There's a stratagem where you can move. So I move the Nightbringer around to charge you and you just move D6 inches back so I can't so charge you. Get away from those charges, yeah. Yeah, it's it's quite good. Uh, yeah. What have we brought with us today? Okay, so the Lionel Johnson um, yep. Yep. needs to be the Warlord, so he's knocking around. Yeah. Um, his data sheet has changed slightly. So as I previously mentioned, he's no longer minus one to wound. So he's just toughness nine uh, with a three up invul. Three up invul. Three on. It's quite nice. Um, his sweep strike has gone from two damage a time down to one damage a time. Right. So, so that's the things to, to note. So if you see me rolling, just bear that in mind. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, he, he, he hits stuff and runs around. Um, he's got three prime mark abilities. Um, important to note, he has a he can give... Um, himself a four up feel no pain against mortal wounds right we had a chat off camera and it does not apply to devastating wounds but only to mortals we'll cover it as it comes yes so he's going to be uh, rocking behind 10 assault intercessors one more thing to know about the line actually mm. is he's got lone operative if he's within three inches of a dark angel infantry model infantry model so you can't shoot him yeah. Even though he's not attached to anyone, so long as he stays next to a dude. Correct. Yeah. And his useful aura that he can give out is plus one to hit or plus one to wound yeah, or he, something. He gives out. He can choose at the start of the turn in the command phase. He can give out um, a plus one to hit to a, a unit that's within range. So within six, and that's not just infantry either. That could be dreadnoughts hitting on twos. It that could be, could be terminators hitting on twos. Well, anyone they hit within on twos six already. They hit on twos there anyway. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What else we got? So then we've got two squads of intercessors. Um, one guy's got a fist, the other guy's got a power sword. Okay. So they're just here for sticky objectives. I think it's really strong. Yes. Um, so they're just going to run around, hopefully just grab some objectives and keep me in the game. Yep. Um, then we have the five Deathwing Knights being led by an interrogated chaplain. Um, his ability gives them plus one to wound when they're attacking. Right, nice. okay. Well, particularly as they've only got strength six weapons now. Yeah. So, so plus one to wound with him. Nice. Should be really nice. Um, and then also he's got the enhancement, the blade driven deep. Right. Which gives him and his unit infiltrate. Oh. So those terminators will be deployed quite far up the table, turn one, which would be nice. Um, backing them up, I have a tech marine, um, and 
three redemptive dreadnoughts. Two yes. with the macros, one with the uh, big old assault cannon. Yes. And they're just grumpy boys. So he's going to be healing them D3 wounds a turn. He can look at one and say plus one to hit. There's also a strapped in the Vanguard detachment that if I'm more than 12 inches away, I can give another unit plus one to hit. So two of those dreadnoughts should be hitting on twos if nice. I so choose. Be nice for the plasma. Or you could throw it out on the predators. Or I could throw it out on the predators. Because you've got two predators with all the last cannons. Don't forget they come with HKs now as they well. Indeed. So you've actually got quite a bit of long range stacker with the predators and with the big nasty plasma gushin that's coming out with the redemptive dreadnoughts. Yeah. But redemptive dreadnoughts minus one damage on them as well. Yeah, yeah. And with the minus one to hit and always being in cover. Yeah. I, I, hopefully they'll they'll stick around. But you know, as we've seen, winter's got some. Big old guns. I've got some really big guns and one punchy thing to deal with these three punchy things, which are very scary. Four punchy things with the lion. Five punchy things with the Deathwing Knights. Mm -hmm. This is a brutal list versus a brutal list. This is my lion delivery system. Nice. <laughs> you will either get in and make a mess of things or you will make a mess of him. Okay. When did you finish painting up the lion? Uh, about two days ago. Two so days ago. This is, this is his grand debut and we know what happens. New bottle syndrome. The good thing is he can't split fire, so I won't be making that mistake. Okay. <laughs> so there we are. Let's go to deployment. The battle for the Winter Palace begins with the Necrons encroaching on this corner of the battle grid with triple Redemptor Dreadnoughts coming down this street here. The Doomsday Ark has got a good shot on them. The two Heavy Destroyers are back here though and the Monoliths, well, the Monoliths can move around in following game turns. And I've put the Lockhurst Destroyers back behind the Ruin so they can't be seen. You can't shoot through it. Ruins completely block line of sight unless you're Titanic, such as a Monolith. They can get hit, so long as you can see them, true line of sight is a thing. So we have triple Redemptor Dreadnoughts, and we also have Infiltrating Deathwing Knights, which are very close to the Necron lines down here with the Chaplain, but they are completely behind that ruin there, so they're not going to get lit up unless I move around to see them. The Lion is staying back here for now. He's a long way from home, but he is very aware. He's a Primarch of the Dolmen Gates and the Translocation Technology that the Necrons have employed, and he is very aware that they could appear right behind his lines. The Predators sticking for cover for now, and a couple of units of Intercessors holding on to the objectives down here. But who is initiative? Who will go first? Nice sandwich. <laughs> Do you want first turn? <clears throat> kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, kind of, yeah. See, I did this because I thought it would look cool. Yeah. And then Winters went, ooh, ooh targets. Yeah, so, Doomsday Ark. <clears throat> If they can shoot before I lose one, I'll be a happy man. Nice, okay. All right, after you, sir. And that's a tree. Can I get? Can I grow something bigger than a tree? I grow a six. The orders for the Necrons are to cleanse objectives in turn one, which I won't be able to do. I don't have that type of army with that type of movement, but bring it down, kill some of those vehicles, I might be able to do that. So it's a cagey start from the Necrons. All I've really done is move the monolith round here and then drawn a unit of warriors through the Eternity Gate. So I'm on this central objective and it also allows the monolith to get some shots into one of those Redemptive Dreadnoughts and go for Bring It Down. Along with the Doomsday Ark that stayed still and the Heavy Destroyers back here. But the rest of my stuff kind of stayed back. Look, there's some Deathwing Knights right behind that ruin there that I don't want to go charging into a unit of warriors. These guys, there's no point in moving them into the ruin because then they're just going to get shot at because they're in the ruin rather than behind the ruin. We're, cause it, we're calling this bit as the line here. That's a separate piece. This is a separate piece. The Nightbringer, well, I want you to come to me. He's my only counterpunch unit. He's the only thing that is going to protect the Necrons against this reckless hate. So we'll start off the shooting phase by firing this monolith, everything down into the only dreadnought I'm in range of. Dark Angel's Chris is popping a CP on Armour of Contempt and here is the particle whip, number of shots. And this is hitting on fours because of Vanguard detachment. Wounding on fives, sixes are devastating. There's a devastating wound, that's two wounds. Two wounds become one wound because of dreadnought. Here are the death rays rolling to hit. I'm going to need threes to wound, three of them hit. Now, it's minus four, but you've got cover, minus three, hour of contempt, minus two. So four up saves instead of a six up save. And you fail every single save. And it's the death ray. It's D6 plus one damage. Well, D6 because you reduce all damage by one. 
and it doesn't kill it. It takes eight wounds off of it. So it's on three wounds remaining. Let's shoot the heavy destroyers off them. Uh, they're heavy weapons. We, it's forced to hit, basically, because of Vanguard. Um, I hit you twice, and that's lethal. The other one wounds on a three. It doesn't wound. So one wound comes through. Again, minus four goes all the way down to minus two. So a four up save. Please make a save. Nope. You haven't made a save yet. Nope. That's a flat six damage. It was on three out. remaining. We've got a dead Redemptor, which doesn't, doesn't, doesn't go kaboom. One of the Ancients has gone, and I've still got a Doomsday Arc, which stayed still with heavy guns, but Vanguard, so it's back to hitting on threes. D6 plus one shots, the five shots. And I need threes to hit, and threes to wound. Three five up saves, because of Vanguard. And we make Any every one. single one, and it would be four damage a time. It's three damage a time. It takes nine woos off for Redemptor. That is the end of my shooting phase. I have got Bring It Down for killing one Redemptor Dreadnought, which gets me some points. That Tech Marine is right next to him, though. Can heal him back up again. But that is the opening salvos from the Hypercrypt Necrons in Turn 1. Let's find out what the Dark Angels do in Space Marines Turn 1. So the Necrons pick up four points and the Dark Angels need to engage on all fronts and take the tempting target in No Man's Land. The Lion shouts out orders to engage on all fronts and with the Deathwing Knights moving around in this direction and getting range of that objective and staring at the Catan, by the way. And with the units running around over here, you're engaging on three table quarters, following out the orders of the Lion. This objective down here has got Sticky because you've got some intercessors and you're trying to zone a little bit. And the tempting target is the one right in the middle of the battle grid. In the command phase, the tech marine healed up one of the dreadnoughts back up to five wounds remaining and has awakened its machine spirit. So it will be hitting on twos. And we've got a lot of firepower that is about to erupt down this street into the Necron lines. Oh, one more thing to note, one little thing I like about tech marines is the vengeance it's of the Omnissiah. Because a Dreadnought died with it. Well, a vehicle died within range of him. Mm -hmm. He's got seven attacks now. Yeah. He's an angry boy. With a big axe. With a big axe. Let's go on to the shooting phase. Right. Operation Kill the Doomsday Arc is in effect. It is the Oath of Moment target. And we've got Predators and Dreadnoughts firing at it. Starting off with Dreadnought number one. D6 plus one shots. Overcooking it. For five shots. Five shots. And this particular Dreadnought's hitting on twos. And he hits all the times, nice. Strength 9? Uh, I think it's Toughness 9? I think. Oh. It is Toughness 9. I need 4 up and vulnerable saves. I failed 3 of them. <laughs> there we <laughs> go. Nine, 9 damage. So the Doomsday Arc is already down to 5 wounds remaining. You pass the hazardous check on the weapon and did the small arms fire down into this unit of warriors that got out of the monolith and killed 5 of them. Now we're rinsing and repeating with Dreadnought number 2. Number of shots. So this is the macroplasma into the... Yes. Seven. Happy days. The full spread. Hit, not Threes on. to hit. Re-rolling. For the moment. moment. Force to wound. Two wounds, two. Four up and vulnerable saves. I make them both. So you didn't kill it with the second shot from the big plasma gun of doom. And then you are rinsing and repeating and firing all the anti-infantry down into the little squad of warriors over there and onslaught gatling cannons have devastating wounds Correct. and my saves were terrible and you've wiped out that squad of immortals not immortals warriors which means i won't score an extra five points on the primaries at the start of turn two so you're not going to get the tempting target but you've wiped out the necrons who are trying to tempt you with that target as well and points make prizes we're on to predator number one all right firing an oath of moment target correct so um two side ice cannons first yes both hit Strength 12. Three to wound. Um, one of them wounds. One wound, minus three. Uh, four up and bun. I make the save. Cool, and then uh, one on top is one shot. Which hits. And this is twin link it. Strength 14. So twin, twin linked, link you can reroll the wound, uh, doesn't wound. You have got a HK on the HK top as well, which on hits on a two. two. Hits. And wounds on a three. And that's Ooh. a six. Another four up and vulnerable save. That isn't a four up and vulnerable save. D six damage. It's got five wounds remaining, and you take it down. Pop. Dead doomsday cannon, which blows up. Oh dear. 
Shrapnel exploded left, right and all over the place. The deadly demise killed one in this squad, two in this squad, a wound on the heavy destroyers, two wounds on the monolith. And then there's still some more firepower coming down this way. Predator number two can target the monolith. Threes to hit with the side spontoons. Bang, bang. Strength 12. Wounding on fours, toughness 12. Yes. Toughness 13. Isn't that fun? One wound. One wound. <laughs> This get cover, four up. I fail the four up, D6 plus one damage. Reroll damage rolls of one, because I'm a Predator Annihilator. Nice. That's much better, that's five damage. And then you've got the gun on top, which misses. misses. And you've got a HK, which will hit on a two. And Stuck. that hits. Wounds on a three? Yep. Yep. That wounds. Is it... I need a four. I get a four. Yeah, a little bit of cover keeping me safe. So five wounds off this monolith, two wounds off this monolith. That is the end of Dark Angels turn one. They've wiped out an entire unit of warriors, which means I'm only going to get five points on the primaries at the start of turn two. And currently the Dark Angels are on five, 10, 15 points of primaries, unless I do something about it. They also pick up three points for engage on all fronts. And of course, at the end of your turn, I'm going to pick up some stuff. Yeah. The monolith is going to get picked up. The destroyers are going to get picked up. This monolith is going to get picked up, which means they're going to have to spend a CP to heal them when they're off the table as we go on to Necrons. Turn two. So it's nine points to three. The Necrons need overwhelming force, kill units in range of objectives and capture the enemy outpost, which is well zoned out and probably won't be possible. I'll have a look. There might be some shenanigans. So I had a look around here about capturing the enemy outpost and there's a CP I think I can do. So instead of deep striking more than nine, you deep strike more than three. And I could have put my Lockhurst destroyers down here and captured the enemy outpost. But then the line would have killed them all. <laughs> and I don't want to trade them out in turn two. <laughs> so they're not coming down here. Instead, what we're going to do is try and get overwhelming force, kill units in range of objectives and... These guys aren't in range of that objective, it's sticky. These guys are in range of that objective, but they are Deathwing Knights, so I'd have to kill them all. <laughs> so the only option I really have is over here, kill this unit. So I did spend a CP to heal all my stuff off the table, and that monolith is back to two wounds. And I want to kill this unit, and I spent another CP to make sure I could deep strike uh, with, with it just over three inches. So if I kill them, I will control that objective there. And then we've got the lion who could go charging forward and punching the monolith if he wants to. That's the plan over there. I backed it up with the Lockhurst destroyers who are gonna fire through the gap into that unit as well. Uh, around this side, I tried to run this unit to get onto this objective, which I failed to do even with the CP reroll because I wanted to take that unit up and get them out of the Eternity Gate over there from this monolith, which is completely healed. My warrior squads are reanimated as well. What was that? So long story short, you had a lot of CP. Yes. And now you don't. Yeah, I got one. I've no. been getting points back for ditching cards and things, but yeah, I just spent a lot. Yeah. <laughs> not a lot. Not a lot. It's going to be a 10 inch charge from the Nightbringer into the Deathwing Knights over here. So that's why I wanted the CP for a CP reroll if it comes to that. You can't do that now. Um, I've got one left. It's two CP reroll. Oh yeah, it's two CP reroll for for the Vox thing. So I don't think you've got any CP. Well, I've got one, but I don't know. Yeah, okay. So maybe I make a 10 inch charge. <laughs> uh, try and push you off some of these objectives. We stay still with the heavy destroyers at least, because we want to thread the needle and try and kill this injured Redemptor Dreadnought. Are you armor contempting again? You have got cover. You are. There's going to be a lot more shots going than some other things. Okay, I stayed still. So twos back to threes because of Vanguard thing. And that's a, a lethal hit. So that auto wounds. And because of armor contempt and cover, you need to make a four up save. No. Oh. you don't make a four up save, it's on five wounds. Uh, well, which goes, it's on, well, potentially the monolith. Potentially. It's cost two CP for a reroll. 50-50 chance to keep it alive. Yeah. Because the six wounds becomes five wounds and it's on five left. No! And it's dead. It's dead. It doesn't blow up. That cost you all your CP for ditching cards. You're on one remaining. And then I fired the monolith in at the Redemptor with the particle whip. It just bounced. There's a bit of cover in the way at minus one. Can the death rays hurt the Redemptor though? 
Um, I do hit three times, but none of the sustain hits D3. And can I wound? I can wound once. It's strength 12 and move twice. You need five ups for this. And you make one fair one. D6 plus one damage, which comes D6 damage because Redemptor. Five damage on the Redemptor. Down to seven. Honestly, killing the third Redemptor was a bonus. I lined this up and the Monolith to take down one of them. So I'm happy with that. The rest of my army that can shoot is all the pain and all the firepower coming in here to try and get me overwhelming force. Here's the Lockhurst Destroyers. They're hitting on fours because of Vanguard. Fives and sixes are lethal. Loads of fives and sixes, but only one four, which wounds. So those are the wounds. Eight four up saves with cover. And two, only take down two. Right, let's hit him with the Particle Whip from the Monolith. Now, the reason why I didn't shoot it first, because it has Blast, is because you could have taken from this side, and technically they're behind that ruin there. And these guys could throw the needle through the gap. And if I'd killed too many, you'd have pulled them out of line of sight, so the Lockhurst Destroyers couldn't have shot at them. Tactics. But, tactics, but in the end, I only killed two. Um, 3d6 <laughs> hits with the thing. It is plus one for Blast, though. Right, I am in range of you. So I hit on threes this time. Wounding on twos, but those are devastating, so that just kills two. And those are all cover saves. Minus one, but plus one, because you're crambling seven. all over the ruin. That's seven. Three, three up saves, you've got cover there. And when the dust settles, there's three intercessors still standing, which means it's not enough for overwhelming force. I certainly haven't captured the enemy outpost. Haven't managed to achieve any of my secondaries this turn. Last thing left to fire is the Gaze of Death from the Nightbringer. And it's got D3 shots for one shot, <laughs> which hits on a two. At minus, least it hits. Minus one to hit and one five uh, inches away. Uh, no, I'm within range. Yeah? Yeah, because it's charge range. Oh, yeah. Of I'm, yeah. I'm in range, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, strength 12. It doesn't wound. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of my shooting phase. At least killed a Dreadnought. We've got a 10-inch charge from the Nightbringer. I'm going to spend the CP. Kenny, what's it? What's the thing? So now I've been declared a subject of the charge. Yes. I'm going to spend one CP. So yes. D6 inches. Oh, Vanguard things. Just Vanguard things. So you can move it two inches. So I'm just going to move it. Uh, out of charge range, which means you won't get that objective. Well, this is, this is the thinking, right? I wanted to move it's... sideways, but if I... <laughs> I'm not doing that. You're not, not doing it. Not doing you're that. not doing I'm it. I'm not doing that. Yeah, because you're going to lose five points if you do that. And also, you've got no CP to re-roll and charge. Yeah. Watch Winter Storm 12-inch charge. Yeah, everywhere. the thing is, off camera, you were talking about, hey, I've got this really good scratch in, which will make your charge longer. And the first opportunity to do it, you're like, I'm doing it. One minute. Uh, One you, minute. I, did, yeah. I, <laughs> I want to, because I don't want to be charged by the Nightbringer, right? I can't make a 10-inch charge, though, can I? Yes, you can, internet. Watch this. Ready? Three, two, one. It's a three. three. It's a failed charge. That's the end of Necrons. <laughs> three inches between friends. So, <laughs> all you need is three inches for a good pile in. Uh, that's the end Motion of my... In the ocean. Yeah. That's my, the end of my turn two. It's still nine points to three. You're going to get five, ten, fifteen, unless you fail a Battleshock test there. But you could spend a CP to auto-pass it. I may as well just spend it to, yeah. to auto pass. Uh, I, I mean, it's points. Yeah. It puts you points way. Points mean prizes. Points mean prizes. It puts you way into the lead as we go into Dark Angels turn two. Adding up the primaries, it's eighteen points to nine. The Dark Angels have got double the amount of points of the Necron so far, and they want to deploy a teleport home or either in the centre of the battlefield or in my deployment zone. An overwhelming force, kill units in range of objectives, just like me. But their options are monoliths. So in the movement phase, it looks like the Deathwing Knights are breaking cover. Whether they want to go in against the Nightbringer or not is another interesting thing. They're definitely zoning out that objective there. And in the middle, your Tech Marine is deploying a Teleport Homer there and healing up that Dreadnought one more time. It's back up to eight wounds and it's going to be hitting on twos. I really don't want it charging a Monolith. Because the ability to pick up stuff and put them in Strategic Reserve at the end of the Space Marine, but you can't do that if you're in engagement range. Don't want to be in engagement range. Same around here, because the lion is going to charge forward into this monolith as well. As the secondary orders for the Dark Angels are overwhelming force. Kill objects in range of objective markers, which are monoliths. And monoliths. The predators aiming down the street to shoot at whatever they want to shoot at. And the last thing happened over here is... 
The assault intercessors clambering through the ruins over here so they can charge the Lockhurst destroyers. So I have to overwatch them because I don't want to be tied up. I want the ability to pick them up and deep strike them in again. I'm back up to three CP though because I had one and I ditched the card and I got one this turn. So I can overwatch. That leaves me a couple of CP to do some other shenanigans. But yeah, let's try and kill them. But I'm going to need sixes to hit and six is auto wound and those are three wounds you are uh you got two guys in cover you can do all the cover four up saves on all of the things and i don't hurt them at all okay that could be a problem and now we're onto the shooting phase where there's even more of a problem because the redemptor dreadnought is shooting its big gun it can see the destroyers down into the destroyers Overcooking, number of shots, d6 plus two to this because a blast is six shots. And remember, this Redemptor Dreadnought is hitting on twos. Everything hits. Wounds on threes. And we have four wounds. And an AP minus four, four. with no cover saves because there's no cover here. It means you kill four of them. Then we fight in with the small arms, the storm bolter, the onslaught gatling cannon. I've got two left, one's on a wound. At least I pulled from the front to make the charge as long as I can. You're gonna fire in some heavy bolt pistols into them as well? Yeah. And try and tickle them. Three's to hit. Uh, we have two hits. Fives. We have no wounds. Plasma pistol. Nice. Hits. Brilliant. Uh, threes. String seven. Yeah. It does wound. Do you kill another one? No, no. you don't kill another one. We need to do the hazardous check on your dreadnought. He's fine. Okay, so that's the shooting phase into the Lockhurst Destroyers. It's the line in range. It's the line in range. Is he going to shoot him as well? Well, he's got a gun in his hand, hasn't he? We measured up the armor Lunas from Lionel Johnson is not in range, but behind him are all these intercessors here. They can see them. And they hit on threes. Five to wound. Another wound at Eight. minus one. And I fail that save. You kill another destroyer because one was on one, one wound remaining. Now we're coming down to the street. The predators are firing back here at the heavy destroyers, which are the oath of moment target. Here's predator number one. Hits on that. And wounds on twos. And that is a wound. Uh, minus three. Yeah. No cover. I failed to save. D6 plus one damage. And one of them gets nuked. And then you've got the twin link gun on top. Which is one shot. Yes. Which hits and will wound on a two. Wounds. Minus three. And I failed that save as well. Reroll damage was a one for a predator analyzer. Okay. And it's four and they're four wounds each. One predator kills both of the heavy destroyers. So the one on the right killed the heavy destroyers. The one on the left, which he kept in your pocket just in case, can fire through all of that stuff and down into the heavy destroyers. Here's the spontoons. And they both miss the main turret gun hits and wounds on a two. that wounds uh loads of cover in the way this time i need a five and i make the save cool. lionel johnson fired his pistol at the monolith didn't wound it that's the end of the shooting phase completely losing the heavy destroyers losing five out of six of my destroyers here was nasty so at the end of the phase i'm going to do my once per battle pop the resurrection orb which uh, reanimates d6 wounds on that squad for two, puts one back in on two wounds, which will definitely go behind. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now we're onto the charge phase and Lionel Johnson is not afraid. He goes flying into the monolith. Then we're on to the assault intercessors. I need to measure up now to find out how far this charge is. It's an eight, you need an eight. And that's a nine. Smash, they get in there. And then this Redemptor Dreadnought needs a five inch charge to get to the monolith in the middle. And that is a five inch charge. Successful charges across the line. I'm looking at the Deathwing Knights. Do you want to charge the Deathwing Knights? No. Into a Catan? Nope. All right then, let's go on to the fight phase. So Lionel Johnson has fight first. So we're starting with Lionel Johnson versus a monolith. His sword is AP minus four. So I'm spending a CP on a four up invulnerable save. Uh, hit on two. And uh, is that a, it looks like he hits. Oh, that's one miss. He misses once. Misses once. Five to wound? Four, strength 12. Strength 12, toughness 13. Five to wound. I said 13 on him. Yeah, drop right. plus don't count. He wounds twice. Two, four plus invulnerable saves. 
and that is a flat four damage. That monolith already took two wounds. It's taken six in total, but it's not dead yet. More importantly though, I can't pick it up and put it away into strategic reserve. It can't teleport anymore while it's in combat. I've got one CP, I can't interrupt. So now we're on to the intercessors. Here's the chainsaws into the destroyers. They're gonna hit on threes. Five's the wound, because we're a bit tough. Free roll ones. So no, just two wounds come through. I think these are four up saves. Yep, minus one with the chainsaw. So one got through, then the sergeant has a power sword. And he hits twice. Can he wound? On fives again? He can wound. Minus one? Oh, minus two, sorry. I make a six. I make the save. So only one wound on the destroyers. Now the last fight we have to do is Redemptor Dreadnought versus Monolith. Starting off with a tank shock. Looking for fives. Impact ticks as he goes smashing in there. And you do two mortal wounds at the start. Then his giant fist. Ten on twos because of this happening. Oh, right, nice. Okay, he misses twice. Five to wounds. I know, strength 13 is crazy. He does get two wounds through. It's minus two, so yeah. I have four up saves, which I fail one, and that's another three damage for five in total. So the monolith will attempt to fight back by stripping bits of armor off the Redemptor and trying to drag it through the Eternity Gate. It hits on twos. But it needs fives to wound. The Redemptor is a chonky lad and doesn't wound. Then over here, we'll do the same thing versus the Lion on twos. And of course, get three ones. He dodges quite nimbly to one side. But I do get two wounds. And he does have a three up invulnerable save. And he fails one of them. And is AP on your attack? It's AP minus two. Yes. Three damage. I take three wounds off the Lion. So Lyle Johnson. It's down to seven wounds remaining as this fight continues. Then behind the monoliths, the destroyers fight back into the intercessors and hit once. And don't wound. And then the Lockhurst Lord, my HQ, raises the Lord's Blade and hits on twos and hits all the times. At strength eight, he'll wound on twos. And he wounds three times and then minus three, two damage. You need sixes. And there's one six leaving the sergeant alive. So with my Lockhurst locked up, <laughs> and both of the monoliths locked up, and with the Dark Angels deploying a teleport homer, it's 21 points to the Space Marines and nine to the Necrons. But I do OC you off the objective in the center. Dreadnought has four or five, Monolith has eight. eight. So he's definitely got that one. I've got my home objective down here. So at the start of turn three, It'll be 21 points to 18, something like that. I need to double check. Not pulling these off the battlefield. I can pull off warriors. You can pick any three units and put them in the strategic. But if I pick a unit of warriors, they're going to come on from the board edge you heard instead. You when just like pulling off warriors. I'm going to, well, these warriors, I definitely like pulling them off. So because I'm looking, off the table, yeah. I'm, I'm looking here, you see, because they can walk on in turn three yep. and stop you getting this sticky objective, which could be very interesting. As we go to Necrons, turn three. Yes, it's 1921, I'm two points behind. I kept an uh, overwhelming force and I need the tempting target. So at the end of Dark Angels Chris's turn, I picked up a unit of warriors and I brought them in here with cosmic precision, which will stop him getting five points and doesn't make that objective sticky anymore. It's tactics, I like it. And then you have decisions to make on the tempting targets to make this one, that way. Well, you shouldn't make this one the tempting target because I already see you off of it. If you make this one the tempting target, then if I kill all the intercessors, I get that tempting target. So you made this one over here with the Deathwing Knights the tempting target. And in order to take the tempting target, you've an OCF 6 right now, I've an OCF 4. I've got to kill at least three of them. And I don't know if the Nightbringer can do that because Deathwing Knights are very chonky. It does also put the Deathwing, the, the uh, Nightbringer down in this corner, which you said is where you want it to be. Yeah, it's out of the fight. Out of the fight over here away from stuff i'll have to do i mean there'll be predators for the next turn or something like that maybe i also need to kill stuff in range of objective markers for overwhelming force because i kept that in my hand and there is a dreadnought there there is also this unit of intercessors over here oh and the other thing i did we did some reanimation we did some things this monolith is back up to four wounds. This monolith is back up to three wounds. These destroyers are all healed and then they fell back because my last unit of warriors came through the Eternity Gate from this monolith and is going to shoot the sergeant in the back. 
So I start the shooting phase with the Warriors. Shot Sergeant in the back. He's gone. Uh, heavy Destroyers can't shoot anything this turn. But what I can do is fire this Monolith. Now the Particle Whip is Blast. So it has to fire at the Intercessors. And the Death Rays are going to try and kill a Primark. Number of shots from Particle Whip plus Blast. However, that Monolith is in engagement range. So these hit on fours. Well, it was good, wasn't it, Chris? For you, yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Twos to wound, sixes are devastating, no wounds, you are in cover, so seven, three up saves on your intercessors. It's fine, everything is fine, boys. Everything's going to be fine. Seven saves, and a three up. You lose two. Now let's put four death rays into the lion's face. On fours, sixes are sustained hits, D3. And I hit him five times, no, four times. Mm -hmm. Strength really high, but he's toughness nine or something. Toughness nine, yeah. So threes to wound. And then he has three invulnerable saves. And he failed two of them. You don't have enough CP to reroll. There's two CP for a reroll. Yep. The lion's on seven wounds remaining. See you later, I'll get it. This is 2d6 plus two to this dice roll. And yeah. a Primark has fallen. I don't know how I feel about that. I've got a real soft spot for the Dark Angels in the lore. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, there's something not right there, isn't there? But, well, it is a monolith. It's it's not that, it's, it's. what do you mean not right in the rules? There's something not right in the, in, fluff. In the fluff. There's something, I mean, like, those are the roles. The three plus in row is really, really strong. Not complaining about that. It's just, yeah. So, yeah, how many points is he? 365. The monolith's 350, so that's about right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you've got 22 wounds. And, yeah. And toughness 13. Yeah. And you can chuck a involve on whenever you want. Yeah. And but... you've got more guns. <laughs> and you can teleport units through it. Yeah. And you can deep strike it every turn. Well, yeah, there's a lot of things it can do. Right, okay. But what have the Romans ever done for us? Ah, the aqueduct. Well, onto monolith number two. Can't mm. fire the particle whip at Redemptor. It's got blast. Uh, can fire particle whip at Tech Marine. No, he's got no knockers. Um, can't fire at uh, Tech Marine. I think Log and Operatives only kicks in if you're more than 12 away. Oh, yeah, 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 you're completely... And I think I need to be within three of the Dread, and I'm not... So okay, I... so fire at Tech Marine, and then Death Rays down in at Redemptor Dreadnought. Let's do Particle Whip into Tech Marine. Not many shots. Which hit on fours because of engagement range. Wound him on twos. Three, three up saves to make. He's fine. He's fine. Couldn't do that with Lion, though, could I? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, death rays. Death rays. Okay, so two hits plus a D3. Okay, so that is four hits in total. Wounding a Redemptor Dreadnought on threes. And at AP minus four, you need six up saves. Yep. You not make any of them either. 3d6 plus 3 yeah. on the Redemptor. 3d6 because the minus damage. Wow. Yeah, many, many wounds. 20 plus wounds. He doesn't deadly demise and Redemptor. Redemptor Dreadnought number 3 has fallen. While energy weapons and green light flickers down in the ruined city streets, the warriors over here fire more gauss into this unit of intercessors. They hit on fours, but six is a lethal. Gauss flares always used to be strength 5. But they're strength four now. It's four up saves. Each doing one damage. And I take out one and a bit. That's the end of the shooting phase. This unit of warriors can't charge when they use cosmic precision to come in this close. Not that I want to charge a unit of intercessors anyway. I'm mainly here to stop points being scored. Interestingly, across here, I've also stopped points being scored as well. Because monoliths, as well as all the things they do, have an OC of eight. And you currently have an OC of six mm -hmm. on that objective. So I've stolen that objective off of the uh, off of the Space Marines. Now we're on to the charge phase. No one minute. Gaze of death with mm -hmm. the Nightbringer first. D3 shots. That's one shot. Hits on a two. Wounds. Twos to wound. If that's a hit, that's a wound. This is a four up and vulnerable save. When you fail it. Gazer's death is D6 plus 3. You reduce all damage by 1, so you need a 2 plus. The scythe of the Night Springer strikes down on 2s, and I missed twice. Strength 14, wounds on 2s. 6s are devastating, and there's 2 devastating wounds, and there's 1 invulnerable save. And you fail the invulnerable save. 
And this is d6 plus 2 damage. So I need 3 pluses to kill a dude. I'll have to do it separately because it's spilling yeah. over. The first one doesn't kill a dude. The second one. <laughs> That's the dude dead, finally, because that would be 3 and 3. And then the last one doesn't kill a dude. Then the Deathwing Parlin. There's two with maces. And they hit on twos. Twos, nice. Okay, and you would be wounding on fives? Uh, sixes, because I'm strength uh, six. Strength six, toughness 11 would be wounding on fives, but Chaplain gives you plus on the wound? Yeah, oh, fours. So you're wounding on fours. And you wound five times. Five invulnerable saves, a four up, and that's two damage, which becomes one damage. Then he's got to feel no pain. Takes up wound, it's down to 11 remaining. Then you've got the Mace of Absolution from the big dude, the master. Mm -hmm. And he hits on twos. And this is uh, sustained hits and devastating wounds. Nice. Okay. Uh, no sustained. And then wounding on four. Two There's more wounds. A devastating. A devastating wound. So one more four up and run, which I fail. How much damage does he do? He does two. Two damage a time, which causes one damage a time. Yep. So feeling of the pains. Uh, he's taken three wounds in total. He's down to nine remaining. Then the chaplain raises his crozius. Yep. Four to hit. Got two to uh, two to hit, sorry, what am I talking about? Force to wound is the thing. He wounds twice as well, nice. Uh, two more, four plus invulnerable saves. Um, and fail them both. Halving damage, two more feel no pains. You've managed to strip five wounds off the Nightbringer. Then at the end of the fight phase, he's got his drain life thing, so he rolls a four. And that's a four. And what it does is every enemy unit within six inches suffers D3 mortal wounds. And that's another two mortal wounds as he drains the life of one of the Deathwing Knights. I... However, 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 Watcher in the Dark, once per battle, four up, mortal wound, feel no painting things. Okay, so he only drains the life once, so he tries to drain your life, but Watcher of the Dark goes, whoa there, fella. Whoa, hang on. on. We like these guys, they help with the Caliban thing. But that means, at the end of turn three, I haven't taken this tempting target because OC4 versus OC4, that one Watcher in the Dark thing has kept you safe. Mm -hmm. So I don't get the five points for that. But you won't get the five points for this one, this one, this one, or this one. In fact, you won't get any primary points. points. No. And I get five, ten points for killing two units in range. No, five points. Three, five points for killing two units in range of objective markers for overwhelming voice, which puts the Necrons a little bit into the lead as we go on to Dark Angels turn three. So the Necrons are winning 24 to 21 and the Dark Angels just want to kill as much as possible for no prisoners and they want to extend their battle lines. With the line grievously wounded, the Dark Angels reposition to try and clear their battle lines. All of these intercessors looking at these warriors down here and if you kill them, that's some points for no prisoners. But more importantly, if you take that objective, and the Dark Angels somehow manage to take this objective by getting rid of the Nightbringer, that'll also be extend their battle lines. They'll be managing to secure some of these secondaries that are coming through the Vox, the orders coming through the Vox. It means no pressure is coming on the monoliths for a couple of turns. But um, pick your poison, really. Mm. Stuck between monoliths and a hard case, and the Nightbringer is a very hard case. Of course, the Nightbringer is the Oath of Moment target, but we're going to start down here with loads of Intercessors firing at Warriors. We're doing both of the units of Intercessors together, hitting on threes. Daka, daka, daka. Four to wound you. Five up saves. I lose four of them. That cuts them down to six remaining. Now, both of the Predators are probably firing at the Nightbringer, but uh, you're going to do the Pintle Mounted Storm Bolters down into the Warriors while we're here. So that's eight shots coming into the Warriors from the Storm Bolters. These are hitting on threes. The Tech Marine was a bit too far away to bless any of them this turn. In the command phase, yeah. Yes, and these are going to wound on fours. And that is uh, four more wounds. These are four up saves now. I'll lose three more warriors. There's only three remaining. A nice juicy target for those intercessors to go charging in. You've already OC'd me off of that objective. So now we're going to fire Laz cannons down into the Nightbringer. The Oath of Moment target. Predator number one. Yeah, so we're going to start with the, the furthest one. Well, that's the only thing they can see, so it doesn't matter either way. Okay. So yeah, uh, Sponsons first. Yes. Fours, because he's in combat, but Oath of Moment, you get the rerolls. And that one's really cocked. 
And we have two hits. Uh, wounds on t uh, threes. They both wound. Four plus and vulnerable saves coming up. I make one fair one. D6 plus one damage, which is halved. So that six becomes three. And you feel no pains. Three feel no pains. It's on seven wounds left. It's on four wounds left. And the top gun. Big top gun of doom. Misses. Oath. Oath. Hits. Hits. Wounds. Sorry, 14. Wounds. Nice. Four up in vulnerable three. save. How many CP have I got for a command point reroll? You're free. I make it, I make it, he's okay. He's Next. still on three wounds remaining. Next predator. Predator number two. Uh, we have one hit, one miss. Oath of moment. We have two hits. Four three to wounds. wounds. Yeah. We have two wounds, two, four plus invulnerable saves. I make one fail one. Six one minute. Plus. Command point. Yeah. I have the command point. How many, puts me down to one remaining? Yeah. Yes, I make okay. it. Top right, one. top one. Hits. Hits. Wounds on a three. Wounds. Wounds. Oh no. Four plus in front of you. You could probably you'll do it fine. in close combat as well, couldn't you? You'll, you'll be fine. I failed the invulnerable save. Alright, D6 plus Three one. wounds remaining. Three. Three so becomes can't, two. Can't kill him. Two feel no pains. It's on one wound remaining at the end of the shooting phase. It's not dead yet. It's still the Oath of Moment target. It is. And then we come across here where the intercessors charge the warriors. There's only three left. I should have picked them up. Hits the fist on the sergeant, and he hits once. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wounds on the two. Oh, dear. He does wound, and I fail the save. So there's two remaining. Six. Six attacks. Nine attacks. There's three of them. Oh, yeah, there's three of them left. Yeah. Three's to hit. No. Four's to wound. Last bit. Five Last wounds. Bit. Five, four up saves. There is one little warrior left standing there. So you haven't got no prisoners for killing that squad. I'll do the fight back. I hit you. I wound you. I wound one. One's on a wound. A and that's a two. <laughs> he takes one out. What a spiteful little dude. I love it. Now we're back over here to the side town shard of the Nightbringer. Fighting Deathwing Knights. Hitting them on twos. At strength 14, the six wounds. Work invulnerable saves. And you make every single invulnerable save. What legends. Wow. What heroes. No devastating wounds came through. They withstand the Right, you can hit me back. I've got one wound. Let's do it. Mike, okay. <clears throat> Mike Master raising his relic fail. So okay. Same hits and devastating wounds. Okay. Uh, two. And Re I am the oath of moment target. Re rolling. And that's the mm. same hits. Brilliant. Okay. Force to wound. Force to wound. Plus one from the chaplain. Okay. That is four devastating wounds. What? And two normals. I didn't get any devastating. Okay, four up and vulnerable saves. Okay, right. How many wounds is it each? So it's five in total. It would be ten, but five. I can make five feel no pain. It would be twelve. It would be twelve. It would be twelve. But okay, right. But it comes six. Yeah. Feel no pains. No, he's definitely dead. Got it. <laughs> Does he blow up? He doesn't blow up. And you take out this, it's gone. Wow. And at the end of turn three, a shard of a star god has fallen. And you've got no prisoners for killing the thing. And you've extended the battle lines for the things, which makes the Dark Angel score up to 29 points to the Necrons. 24. It's been an absolutely brutal battle. All of the Necrons footprint is now down along this side, but none of it is in close combat. So they all have the ability to teleport off again. So at the end of your phase, I'm picking up the monolith, the monolith, and these guys. Really? I'm spending CP. Yeah, why? Because you won't hold the objectives. I won't hold the objectives, you're right. If you pick them up, you, you take away 10 points. Yeah, he needs to... Okay, so yeah, I'm only picking this one up. It makes more sense. <laughs> I'm leaving the monolith <laughs> there and the monolith there. I'll only pick this one up. I will spend the CP so I can reanimate one of these guys. Because I've got one CP over there and I'm going to get one this. Okay, yeah. 29 points to 24. Just picking up the destroyers. Let's find out what the orders are for the Necrons. Yes, yes, yes. Leaving the monoliths in place gets me 15 on the primary. So 39, 29, 10 points in the lead. Now I need to storm a hostile objective and assassinate a character. And you've still got a chaplain running around. I have, yeah. And a tech marine who's hidden by those. So the tech marine's basically out of the question. The chaplain? Hmm. 
So we did some reanimation and we did some healing. This monolith is back up to full wounds, moving around this way. The warrior's getting out and they want to fire in all the shots at the Deathwing Knights and potentially assassinate a character. I should really start shooting at predators, but now the monolith is up to full wounds and I can give it a four up and vulnerable save. I'm going to focus on trying to get the points. Yeah. Kill Chaplin, kill Deathwing Knights. This unit of warriors have been chilling back here all game. This Doomsday Arc has a move around this way to kill those intercessors right in front. And the Lockhurst Destroyers that got charged, rudely charged, have now go through a translocation spike. And have rematerialized over here. And I reanimated one back in. Um, past Battleshock. Past Battleshock. They fell back out of combat. There was one left. Mm -hmm. But two, he helped get two of his buddies up. Yeah. And the idea is to shoot all the guns from heavy destroyers into this, these fellas over here and wipe them out. Ah, threes to hit. You're the closest cell reroll ones, hard wired for hatred. And fives, auto wound. These wound on threes. Six five up saves. Each doing two damage and that unit get wiped out. And then this monolith, well, the only target it has with all of its guns is down at the intercessors in front of it. Four death rays might be a bit of overkill, potentially not. Uh, I wound them, minus four. Well, you need six up saves. Negative, and that is six damage on one, six damage on another. And then I'll do the particle whip on the sergeant. And then the particle whip killed the sergeant. Two units of intercessors gone. Now we'll come around here. The warriors that disembarked from the monolith that got sucked through the eternity gate are going to fire everything at the Deathwing Knights. Three wounds. Just three wounds came through. Minus one. Plus one per... Okay. Oh, no, no, well, just minus no two. damage yeah. anyway. 3d6 hits for particle whip. 3d6 shots, sorry. Which wounds on twos. Sixes are devastating. And it would be two damage a time. But one damage a time. Because Deathwing Knights. So... And these are all three up saves. So six three up saves. And you're, well, okay. So one, so that is, yeah, it's two damage a time, but uh, one damage a time. So that kills two, well, two Deathwing Knights. Yeah, and Devastating didn't spill over anymore, do they? So yeah. yeah. Two that leaves the Chaplain and the Master left stood here, and that is the end of my shooting phase. So I haven't assassinated anything, but interestingly enough, I have stormed a hostile objective because you controlled this objective at the start of my turn. So that gets me five points. At the start of the Dark Angel's turn, they're going to pick up five points for this objective here. And let's find out what their orders are because, well, they have very few assets left. Adding on all the things, it's 44 to 34 in favour of the Necrons and the Dark Angels want to storm a hostile objective and kill a character. So in the movement phase, the Deathwing Knights and the Chaplain jump back into cover. I mean, coming this way towards the monolith and all of them. You might be able to kill a bunch of warriors, but getting closer to that monolith is crazy. Yes. And remember the stealth thing, minus one to hit, plus the cover, more than 12 inches away. That's a good thing. Now, storm a hostile objective and kill a character. Well, you've stormed a hostile objective. Both of the predators have driven around and they now control that objective. Kill a character last cannons into the destroyer squad they're the oath of moment target here's the last cannons hitting them sponsons sponsons and these are on twos because one of them was blessed and wounding on twos uh, that's up wound six up negative one's on one wound he's dead cool. and then the other shot hits on a two on the turret and this will wound on a two twin linked and that's a wound and i need a six again which i don't get D6 six. plus one, that kills the second one. So there's a Lord left and the last destroyer. These hit on threes from the second predator and wound on twos from the second predator. And there's a wound. There's not a save. Can you kill the last destroyer? You can. And so the last shot into the destroyer Lord with the Oath of the Moment target hit. hits. Yes. Wounds on a two. That is a wound. Wounds. They do have a four up and vulnerable save. And I make my four up and vulnerable save. That leaves the Locust Lord on his own. He can't reanimate any more destroyers. He wonders where his beautiful creations have gone. And then we did all the Storm Waters and the Tech Marine point blank range into the Warriors. And they have been wiped out.
At the end of turn four, that makes it 39 points for the Dark Angels, 44 points for the Necrons. They're five points in the lead. Then in turn five, I'm going to get five, 10, 15 points for being on three objectives, making it 59 points to 39, which puts the Necrons 20 points in the lead. And my orders are to engage on all fronts and deploy a teleport homer both of which I can do. Yeah. That one in the centre, that one in three table quarters, puts me 26 points in the lead. And the Dark Angels, well, you might score five on a primary. Might score five on a primary. But then you've only got two active units left on the table. So at this point, Dark Angels, Chris, is conceding. And we're going to say this is the way the world is. With Lionel Johnson getting taken out, the First Legion have decided to withdraw from this battle grid and uh, give up the Winter Palace for the Necrons, to the Necrons, and then nuke the site from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Absolutely. I don't want this world anymore. <laughs> Chalk it up as a win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Hypercrypt Necrons, thoughts? Really, really good. So, I thought one of the big problems with Necrons was their overall lack of speed. Yes. This, this detachment turns that on its head. Um, I mean, are monoliths really expensive? Yeah. Are they worth the points? I would, I would be inclined to say yeah. The list that you gave me, I mean, 350 points for guns and stuff, yeah. But when you add in the fact that they can tank shock, when warriors can come through them, when they can deep it's strike this, in with this detachment. Yeah, yeah, and it's, and it's also at this point in the game. So when, that, when you get into turn three and the table starts opening up, all of a sudden being able to just pick these up yeah. and just put them somewhere else and then bring some bodies out to really take objectives, really do like your investigate signals, you can deploy homers, because you can pick that up, take an objective, the guys can jump out, they can do their action. That's true, yeah. And then the monolith can still shoot with all its guns. So really strong, really it, good, really, really good. It does action. feel strong. Yeah, it, it does. does. And I feel... And this isn't optimised either. No. It's about halfway, isn't it? Uh, how could you get... I mean, is You're two monoliths too course. strong? I think two modelers with the Catan is definitely strong. I know, I'm not lie. I felt a bit dirty bringing him. I'm really sorry. No, no, no. He's but fine. Uh, when you said um, three, uh, you were bringing a Primark along, I was like, well, okay, he's 300 plus points. I need a 300 plus point thing. And to be fair, <sighs> normally you kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell anyone about the last game that we played we didn't put on the internet? Yeah. How many turns of gameplay did you get? Two? Two games. How two many games. Game turns of gameplay did I get? One. What army did you bring? Eldar. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> That one isn't going on the internet. No, that one isn't. because. But that was rather painful. Yeah, I mean, this. we both kind of already agreed that Eldar, when their codex comes, it needs a rewrite. You can't fix their their flaws with points now there's yeah they're, they're, like, you cannot fix dice results in a dice rolling game well, this is a game of chance yeah. if you want to play a game with someone where no chance is involved go and play chess or yeah. monopoly or not monopoly or checkers or something yeah, like exactly. that this is a dice game where sometimes you roll five ones and sometimes you roll five sixes and i don't think that's a problem I love those glorious mm. moments when it doesn't matter what you do, you roll eight ones and your army's dead, and da -da, the dice are telling you a story. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. telling you that that charge that you thought would be heroic went horribly wrong. Exactly. And you have to adjust to it, and you have to, you have to work around it. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me personally, like, I don't think the dice rolls for me you know, were exceptionally good or exceptionally bad. Yeah. Like my, my wounding, my damaging was good. I lost that game in deployment. Yeah. So, yeah, hundred percent. So I, I think that's a lesson. I, I bet loads of people on the internet were screaming when they saw the three dreads out in the open. Yeah. You know, so it's when you're deploying, like you can you can lose a game before you can roll your first dice. Deployment's very key. Mm. Um, so when you fight hypercrep necrons again, necrons again, I think what's the way to beat them? Lots of small units to stop them deep striking everywhere. Mind you, they can just deep strike beyond three. I yeah. Think. So I don't know what the thing is. The bigger guns. Punch them in close combat. I mean, the Dreadnought thing was good, but you need to tie them up with more things so then they can't deep strike away. But then it's still a monolith. Even if you tie up a monolith in close combat, it's still a monolith. And it's good in combat. It's still got 20 old and wounds at toughness 13 with a 2 up save. That you, and you slap that in Val, when you need to. They're pretty good in combat, yeah. Yeah, and you know, you can pull them off the table and then you're just regenerating while they're off the table as well. Um, I don't. Immediately, like with Marines, I haven't immediately got an answer. I yeah. think 
really you just have to play the play the objective but as you can see the ability just to bounce in a single turn across yeah. the table it's you know it's huge i think eldar have the answer with devastating wounds but eldar have an answer to lots of things yeah and also, I'm telling you something else that's got the answer. The internet. Yes. Internet. If you made it to this far in the video, God bless you. You might yeah. as well become a channel member if you made it this far. <laughs> and get some extra videos. So thank you very much. But if you've got any ideas or tips or tricks or seen other battle reports dealing with the Hypercrypt Necrons, please let me know. Write in the comment section below. We'll have a good read. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, there's, the, there's the psychic element you could go down. That's true. I mean, yeah. I think Thousand Suns and Chaos Space Marines can give them a run for their money. Chaos Space Marines are good, you know. Yeah. I like yeah, the shenanigans yeah. in Chaos yeah. Space Marines. World Eaters are really good. I'm really surprised by World Eaters. Well, World Eaters do one thing. They do. Well, one World thing. Eaters are really good with Angron. Let's, let's, I mean, I've seen, yeah, you need Angron. And Angron's good. And he keeps coming back. And he keeps, that's he's why he's good. He's a potential problem. Yes. You so, can't ignore him. But World Eaters without Angron, they're a step down. Yeah. But yeah. with Angron, they do one thing and they're really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, answers on the postcard below. <laughs> we uh, thank you one more time to MarchofWar.co.uk. I mean, this this scene it's is gorgeous. absolutely gorgeous. I appreciate you. He's Beautiful. the guy who did all my bases. And if you like the Catan and want one, then hit up Den of Imagination Painting Studios, who are also very lovely people. And thank you to Urban Mats as well for the battle mat. And I'd also like to thank my family and my teacher from maths class. And your cat. And my cat. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone. Say say happy war gaming, Dark Angels, Chris. Happy war gaming. I, I set you up there. You could have said happy war, war gaming, gaming Dark Dark Angels, Chris. Chris. You dropped the ball. Sorry, sorry. Do you want another pass? No, I, I better just become Farsia Fraser, haven't I?